Uh, this is the last video on inherited change. Uh, this is video 7, which is uh, syllabus 9700, A2 biology. So we're going to discuss two topics which have not been covered in the previous uh, six videos. One is uh, autosomal linkage and the second is crossing over. The topic we are discussing is autosomal linkage. So autosomes are what? Autosomes are those chromosomes which code for the body characteristics. So those are the 22 pairs which are present in every cell of our body. And one pair which is the 23rd pair which decides the gender which of course if it's XX is a female or if it is XY then it's a male. So the X chromosome is the same length but the Y chromosome is slightly shorter. So if there is any genetic information on these 22 pairs then these are called autosomes. Now we're going to talk of autosomal linkage and if you look at the word linkage Linkage is the presence of two genes on the same chromosome so that they tend to be inherited together and do not assort independently. So we've got one, so we've got some genetic information on it and then there is another piece of genetic information which is on the same chromosome. So the genetic information on this pair is going to be transferred to the offsprings in the same manner. So linkage is the presence of two genes. So this is gene 1 and then this is gene 2. So there's two informations on the same chromosome so they are inherited together. And so we see this process now and this process is called autosomal linkage. Now I'm going to discuss an example with you about this and then we can see, uh, discuss more of the details of this phenomena. In fruit flies we can see that the body color can either be a striped body which is of course given the letter big E or ebony body which is given the letter. So this is the recessive allele is small e and the dominant allele is big E. While we're going to discuss another characteristic, so it's two pieces of genetic information. One is the body color and the other is the shape of the antennae. Now if they are normal, they are the dominant allele. So we give it capital A. If they are aristopedia means they're sort of like claw shaped their shape is slightly different than the normal one, then it's given the, uh, the letter small a. So we have two, we're going to discuss two informations, two genetic informations, the body color and the shape of the antennae on a fruit fly. Now you can see here the two possibilities if there's homozygous dominant. Now the possibility was that this was one pair of chromosome and this was another pair of chromosome. So they would assort independently. And we would write it like this, big E, big E, and big A, big A. But because this is a question of autosomal linkage, so we know that they are on the same chromosome, the same pair. So we don't write it like this. We write it in a different manner. We say, okay, it's big E, big A, so they're going to go together. So we're going to go show a bracket. And we're not going to write it like this. This was the normal way which was not a question in which there was no autosomal linkage. So in a question in which there is autosomal linkage is that you will have to give the information in such a manner is that you will write it together because they are present on the same chromosome. Usually we have, would have had this situation. This would have been the other situation in which there was no autosomal linkage. So we would write it like this. But when it's a question on autosomal linkage, then we write it like this. Now let's look at the first cross. If we cross a striped normal, which is the dominant allele, and it's homozygous dominant for both characteristics, then it will be big E and big A and big E and big A. And so all the gametes are going to be this. Similarly, in ebony and aristopedia, it's homozygous recessive for both characteristics, so the gamete is only going to be this. 
So when this gamete and this gamete fuse, we get all, the all will be striped and all will be normal aristopedia, will be normal antennae, sorry. So striped body and normal antennae. Why? Because we've got the capital E and we've got the capital A. Please do not mix this with the interaction between loci. So this is now all of these will be striped. Now this of course would be labeled as heterozygous for both characteristics. Like for instance in a normal situation we would have written this like this. We are not writing it like this because this is a question of autosomal linkage. This is not the way we write the genetic information when it is a question of autosomal linkage. So all of these now this is the one that I have just discussed with you, all will be striped normal and this will be heterozygous for both characteristics. Now let us look at another situation which is this one, is that we have crossed uh, heterozygous for both, the one which we got here. We did a test cross with a known homozygous recessive. Normally when we test cross uh, a heterozygous, we should get a ratio of 1 ratio, 1 ratio, 1 ratio, 1. But now here, we are only getting 1 ratio, 1. Why? Because this is a question of autosomal linkage and they sort of are going to assort not independently, but they are going to go together. Please remember now, understand that how I have written these. I have written this in brackets. This is how we write autosomal linkage, but what is important is that you need to understand the gametes have to be circled. Gametes have to be circled and then again we write only in brackets. So here again in brackets and only when we are writing the gametes we write in, we circle the whole of it. So here we get a ratio of 1 ratio 1. Why? Because this is what you see here because it is going to be a question which is going to be checking whether you know what is autosomal linkage or not. So the normal 1 ratio 1 ratio 1 is not going to be found here. It is only going to be 1 ratio 1. Now in this we are going to discuss the phenomena of crossing over and crossing over takes place in prophase 1. Now we are going to cross a female striped normal antenna with a male ebony aristopedia. So you know the ebony aristopedia is small e, small a, small e, small a and we keep it in brackets. While the female is big E, big A and small e, small a. So it is heterozygous for both. Now there is only some cells where the chiasma is going to take place. And in that we get some gametes with this sort of an information in which the crossing over has taken place. While of course in male ebony aristopedia there is no crossing over because it's not going to make any difference as it is. So all the gametes are this. Now you can see here how we get a large number which is which is the 1 ratio 1 and there is a very small number which is the recombinants. So the recombinants are very few but the large numbers are the ones which are of course showing you the main ones which we just discussed a little earlier. So you can see here the female and the male and we are getting this combination. So large numbers and small numbers. Now in crossing over during prophase 1 of meiosis, a pair of homologous chromosomes a bivalent can be seen to be joined by the chiasma. And the chiasma is the place where the genetic information is going to, is going to form a cross here and the genetic information is going to be swapped between non-sister chromatids, between non-sister chromatids. 
And so this results in an exchange of gene loci between a maternal and a paternal chromatid. Now, in this combination which we just talked about, the striped, the one with the large numbers were 44% and then 44%. But the small numbers were 6% and 6%. Now, when we have to calculate the crossover value, the crossover value of the percentage, the crossover value is the case is 6% plus 6% is 12%. Now this is a measure of the distance apart of the teen, two gene loci on their chromosomes. So there is one in which the crossover value is 12%. There is another one in which the crossover value say is 20%. Now, the smaller the crossover value, the smaller the crossover value, the closer they are together, the closer the loci are together. So, larger the crossover value, the further apart they are. So, you have got to understand is, what do we mean by apart? You see, this is one chromosome. This is one gene and then we have another one which is about this far. While in another situation we have this is one gene and the other one is very near it. So we say if we find the crossover values less like we have a crossover value of 12 percent as I just said and 1 in 20 percent. So the smaller the crossover value the smaller the crossover value, the closer the loci are together. So this one is the one which they are close. So this one would be the 12% one. And this one would be the 20% one. So please understand how crossing over occurs in prophase 1 of meiosis and how this is going to result in uh, different combinations and how there is going to be a parental class and there's going to be a recombinant class. This finishes the chapter on inherited change and I hope this has helped you to understand this chapter a little better. Thank you.